Hey everybody and welcome to my science video. My name is Ben Bailey and my video will be running in my school's science video contest. So what are we making today? That is the question. Uh, now today we're going to make a ferro liquid. It's a sort of magnetic liquid. In scientific terms, a ferrofluid is a stable colloidal suspension of superparamagnetic iron oxide nanoparticles. Wow, that's a mouthful. So in English, that means that a ferrofluid is a liquid made up of really tiny magnetic nanoparticles. So for those who are unfamiliar with the word nanoparticles, well, they are basically tiny, tiny, tiny particles. So in this experiment, the particles that we will encounter will have a diameter of approximately 10 nanometers. In perspective, the average thickness of a human hair is 100,000 nanometers. So it's only 10,000 times bigger than the nanoparticles that we will be encountering today. So if you still don't get the definition of what we're making, don't worry. We'll be answering that question later. Before we start, maybe a little history won't hurt. The solution we're going to make today, so the ferrofluid, was discovered in 1963 by NASA's Steve Pappel. So they wanted a magnetic liquid they could use for spaceships while in space, and when there was no gravity, or at least very little. That being said, let's get started. But before that, I would like to point out that this experiment could get very messy, so I suggest the use of a lab coat. Alright, let's get started! In order to make your solution, there are many different ways. The simplest is to buy it already made, but then there is no fun anymore. So one way of doing it is by buying ferric oxide online for very cheap. You can also use a black cannon toner, which is the ink you use in your printers. So what I did is I bought ferric oxide. In both cases, you will need vegetable oil. You can buy this pretty much anywhere, in any supermarket you go to, or you probably already have it in your kitchen. Along with this, you will need a measuring cup, just like so. And you will also need a neodymium magnet. So this is also known as a rare earth magnet. Here it is. You can buy this at your local hardware store or just buy it off internet. It's very cheap and pretty reliable. Finally, I have here a clean plate, a clean space that I can dirty because as I said before, this will get extremely dirty. All right, let's get started. First, pour about 50 milliliters of the ferric oxide into the measuring cup. There we go, 50 milliliters of the ferric oxide in the measuring cup. Then you will need to add four tablespoons of vegetable oil. All right, there we go. Now that this is finished, we just need to stir the solution so that it becomes homogeneous and very liquid. For this, I decided to use a spoon. So make sure you mix until you get a homogeneous consistency and it's thin and very liquid. During this process, you may want to add some oil in order to get rid of the lumps. After this, you're pretty much ready. Firstly, you finish the liquid. Alright, now that you have finished the material, we need to test it. Watch this. I've got this plate that's pretty thin, alright? And I'm going to place it here on the corner, just to stabilize it. I'm going to put something heavy on it, all right? Now, take your liquid and just pour it onto the plate. There you go. Next, take your magnet and place it underneath the board. Isn't that incredible? Here, have a closer look. The spikes shoot out as soon as you put the magnet underneath. That's just amazing. So here's my liquid, and the magnet's not underneath. My magnet's here. Place it underneath, and those spikes just shoot out. 
Isn't that amazing? You move the magnet around just like this. Note that the entire liquid will just follow. You can even draw with it. Now, the question that you must all be wondering is probably why and where do the spikes come from? Alright, now the explanation. So the ferric oxide is a magnetite and gives its magnetic properties. The magnetite particles are called nanoparticles as mentioned earlier because they're really, really, really small. In fact, they are so tiny that they never fully settle at the bottom of the container. They just kind of hang around there as if they were dissolved. So the nanoparticles are highly attracted to each other due to the increased surface area and would normally run into each other and stick together. This does not happen because we covered the nanoparticles with what we call a surfactant, basically the oil. By pouring the oil, that doesn't allow the magnetite to bunch up and lose its special properties. Once the surfactant is bonded to the nanoparticle, it is considered a ligand. The ligand also has an attraction to the fluid and kind of pulls the fluid with the nanoparticles as they feel the magnetic force act upon them. Basically, to make it simple, the oil covers the nanoparticles, making a solution that is homogeneous. This allows the nanoparticles to remain attracted to the magnetic force but they stay in a bundle. That is the reaction of both substances, but the spikes appear as they are trying to line up with the magnetic field. The spikes are the magnetite, the magnetic part of the solution. Okay. The magnetic field looks like this. Therefore, this is the magnet, and here are the waves being sent out. The liquid at the top of the magnet, which is either there or here, will try to follow these waves, causing the spikes to rise and not be held back by gravity. You may be wondering why there is an S and an N. The S stands for South, and the N stands for North the South Pole and the North Pole. These two parts of the magnet are attracted to each other, and these are sending out the waves. That's all. I hope you understood. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write in the comments down below, and if you like this video, don't hesitate to press a like on there. I hope you learned a lot, and that you will try to do this at home, as it is really worth it. See you soon! The ground was shaking like no rain I danced around